In today's lecture, we will be learning everything about fluent assertions in X unit testing with ASP.NET 7 in just one lecture. So, this lecture is a very comprehensive lecture on introduction to the fluent assertions, which is another way of writing X unit testings, but in a much more friendly and layman language way, just like pure English language. And in this lecture, we'll be covering how to set up fluent assertions, how to write some basic tests and then advanced tests, and also write some custom tests of your own, which is not as a part of the fluent library. You can write your own tests and add it to the fluent assertion library. And finally, we'll see how to test the custom assertions as well as go for the best practices in industry for the fluent assertions. So let's switch over to the first part, which will be about the introduction, introduction to fluent assertions. In this lecture, we'll introduce the concept of fluent assertions and discuss their benefits in writing unit tests. So what are fluent assertions? So fluent assertions is a .NET library that provides a fluent interface for asserting the behavior of code under test. It is an alternative to the traditional N unit or X unit assertions and provides a more intuitive and readable way to write assertions. So with fluent assertions, you can write code that reads like natural language, making it easier to understand and maintain. For example, instead of writing assertions like assert.r equal and you are putting to this r equal, which is a method, expected value and the actual value, we can write the same assertion using the fluent assertions like actual value dot should dot be expected value. Now, this expression actual value dot should dot be expected value is more readable as you can see that is more like plain English language, especially when working with complex, ob complex objects. So fluent assertions provides a rich set of extension methods that allows you to write assertions for different types of objects, including strings, numbers, collections, and objects. It also supports custom assertions, allowing you to define your own assertion methods for your custom types. In this lecture, we will be setting up fluent assertions and we will be going over the steps required to set up the fluent assertions in our project. And as you know from the previous lecture that fluent assertions is a third party assertion library that provides more fluent and expressive syntax for writing assertions in your unit test. So let's switch over to Visual Studio now. So on to Visual Studio 2022 and uh, I will create a new project. It's loading up with all the recently project templates, recently used project templates. So X unit is on top, which is what I'm going to use anyway. Click on next and give it a name. Um, let me give it a name. So fluent assertions demo and change the location to where I would like it to. And I can, I will leave this uh, checkbox unchecked, place solution and project in the same directory. You can put it in the same directory, you can check this, but it's not needed for my case. So I'll click on next. .NET 7 standard term support, which is the latest one, .NET 7. And then I will go with the next. It is going to create the X unit test project for me. Now, this is the template of the unit test project using X unit test. Okay. So, fact is the attribute for the X unit, which we'll be doing extensively in the next section when we start our integration test. So, it's a good idea to introduce you to the fluent assertion because we will be using it liberally over the next part of the course. So first of all, you have to add this .NET package. You have to uh, add the NuGet package fluent assertion. So what you do it, right click and click on add, manage NuGet package. So 
let me browse for fluent assertions. Fluent assertions. So I just found it. Fluent assertions. And I will install the latest stable version 16.0. Install. It's going to install it. So let us see the installed package. It seems it has installed already. Fluent assertions installed already. Okay. <clears throat> so now I can also check it by double clicking and let's see the uh, project file. So it shows that package reference include fluent assertions version 16.0. So that is fluent assertions all added. Okay. Now let's go to this unit test one. This is the file class file already created for me and I don't mind writing straight away on the test method test one and fact is the attribute which is required for X unit test for denoting that it is, is a test method okay so I'll have to import this fluent assertions So you using fluent assertions and I will write my first assertion statement which is a simple logic var x equals 10 x dot should dot be x no this not this this is too simple for me so x dot should dot be greater than i will be using greater than y okay tab it out and then run this test as simple as that control shift b i can build it or while testing it will automatically be built it's up to me so let's click on test and run all tests. What do you expect whether it should fail or pass? So in fact, it should pass because x is actually greater than five. X is greater than y, which is 10 greater than five. So it is a pass, it should pass. You can see the test explorer it's, so it is passed okay uh, you get the idea all right that this is the fluent assertion technique as opposed to you could also write it like this that assert dot true x greater than y now if you run this i have already commented out the fluent technique and this is normal assertion technique and if you click on this green arrow it will again pass so the test passes but you can see definitely assert dot true x greater than y is slightly more complex in understanding that x should be greater than y because that is straight away it is just pure english language wherever even though it's a very simple test assert dot true x greater than y is slightly more complex right okay in this lecture we will cover the basics of writing assertions with fluent assertions and will further up our effort from the previous lecture where we have seen uh, write, written a very basic fluent assertion and assertions are a fundamental part of unit testing as I have already told you unit testing as well as integrating integration testing in our case so as they allow us to verify that our code behaves as expected and the fluent assertions provide a wide range of assertion methods that make it easy to write expressive and readable text. So let's again flip over to Visual Studio and 
carry on with our project uh, which is fill intercession demo and write another basic statement you know what test one that it could be test two or let me write a more expressive test you know um, so let's write something which more of a best better practice or best practice you know uh, test Check. So basically, test to check one variable greater than other. Okay, so that we have already seen, and uh, now let us see one variable less than the other. So var x is five. We swap the values. Var x equals five and y equals ten, and x should be this case. Let's delete this line because we will not be using the normal assertion statements. This is all about fluent assertions. So x dot should be less than, right? Because we are checking for variable less than the other. Should dot be less than y. Okay, so x is less than y. So if you test, it should again pass. So it is passed. Now in this example, we are asserting that x is less than y. Now that should method is a convenience method. It is known as convenience method that allows us to start a fluent assertion. And b less than method is the assertion method that verifies the condition. So one is the convenience method and another is the assertion method that verifies the condition. Now we will be chaining assertions. Now, one of the benefits of using fluent assertions is the ability to chain assertions together. We have already seen an example of chaining two assertions. But I will be showing a better example of chaining assertions. Now, this allows us to write concise or readable tests. So, here is another example. Let's just uh, delete this or comment this out. Uh, comment this out. and. String is hello world. The all popular example of hello world. So I've got a string s which is hello world, and then this statement is s dot should Start with not S Hello dot and dot ends with world because it is simply hello world is the string. Okay, so S should start with hello and end with word. Okay, and let's run this test. Now here if you see that, you know, expected a hello world to end with word. Okay, so uh, basically why it failed, I expected it to pass, but it is ending with word with a exclamation sign. So now if you run this test, I would expect this to pass. 
as expected after correcting the error typo it has passed but it is always a good idea to actually rename this because it is no more a test to check one variable less than other it is something like test to check test to demo Chaining assertion, something like that. Okay, so you get the idea. So we are asserting the string s start with hello and ends with word. The start with and end with methods are assertion methods that verify the conditions, and we are chaining these two assertions. Now that we have seen the basic syntax and chaining of uh, assertion types. Let's do something more complex, you know. So fluent assertions provide support for asserting complex types such as collections and object. So I will write another example. So I will just comment this part out. And let me just delete it for sake of clarity. And put something from my clipboard. So this is a list of integers, which is numbers, is the new list which is initial, initialized with uh, 1, 2, 3, 3 elements, list of integers. So the numbers should have count 3 and contain 2. Right? So this is actually satisfying both the condition. It has got count 3, 3 elements and it contains 2. So if you run this test, again it should pass. So it passes as expected. And I didn't bother to change the name because this is also the same demo of chaining assertions. Now, in this example, we are asserting numbers collection. This is a numbers collection, list collection, which has a count of three and contains a number two. The have count and contain methods are assertion methods that verify the condition. Lastly, let us check exceptions. Fluent assertions provide support for asserting exceptions. So let's uh, write something else. So let's just delete this part and put some more code. So action action. Say suppose action is a type or a class. So action action equals throw new exception test. And the second line is action dot should dot throw of type exception with message test. Okay. So if you Click on this test arrow, green arrow. Let's see what happens. So it passes again. So it in this example, we are asserting that the exception of type exception is thrown and that the exception message is test. Okay. Throw exception with message test. The throw and with message methods are assertion methods that verify the condition. Fluent assertions also provide support for negating assertions. So I will show you another example of what you mean by negating assertions. So we will delete this part. That's right. In 5, x equals 5 y equals 10. So it is actually written what I wanted to written, what was in my mind, then x should should be less than or equal to y. Now if you run this test, so it passes. So for negation, so not b is not available okay so if you have to write y is greater than x or it should be it should it is not available to write the extension method not b greater than y okay not b greater than y is not available so instead we are writing 
P less than or equal to Y. It's one and the same thing. So in conclusion, unit assertions provide a powerful and expressive syntax for writing assertions. By using fluent assertions, we can write tests that are easy to read and understand. While also providing comprehensive coverage of our code. In this lecture, we will dive deeper into more advanced assertions using, using fluent assertions. So we'll be doing some collection assertions, and object assertions, property assertions, numeric and string assertions. So let's flip over to Visual Studio. So I have opened the file that we have already, actually the project which we have already started in the previous lecture, Fluent Assertion Demo. And I have created this collection assertion. So I have already written the code and I will keep on explaining because it's a lot of code. There are about 12 tests in this. So it would have taken a lot of time typing each and every test one by one. And you could just club all of these tests into one, but I would like to show you the importance of each of these uh, tests. So these are just one line tests with fact attribute. So I have initialized an I, enum I enumerable of integer and given it a name my collection, which is a new list of integers with four elements one, two, three, four. And there is a read only integer my number, which is number four. And I will tell you the significance of. I used my collection as well as my number. So in the first test was should contain. So my collection should contain two, which should be correct because the list contains one, two, three, four, four elements, four integers. And it should not contain five. It should also result in a passing test, right? And it should contain single. So my collection dot should dot contain single. X goes to X equals equals three. So three occurs only once. So what does it mean? Contains single. It means expect the current collection to contain only a single item matching the specified predicate. And then my collection dot should dot only contain x goes to x is integer. That's true because it is an integer uh, list. All right. And then it should have count of four. So there are four elements. So it should have count of four. Should also pass. So I've already tested it, so it is ticked as correct, but I'm just explaining to you. And um, public void should have count greater than two. Yes, it has got a count of four, it is greater than two. It should also pass, and it should have count less than 10. Yes, it is and just four counts, so less than 10. It should have count in the range. My number dot should dot be in the range one to four. So my number is four. Here comes this usage of my number, which is a read only integer assigned to the value four. So this is uh, in this range. My number should be in the range one to 20. And my number should be less than 20 because it is four. My number should be greater than three. It is four. So all of these tests are passing tests. Now, let's go for some other advanced sessions like, uh, so for that, I have created, you now I'm going to tell you about the um, object assertion, property assertion, numeric and string assertion, which I told in the beginning of this lecture. So I've created a public class within this class, other advanced assertions. So I could always, um, Place a class within a class. So it's got three properties name, which is a string, integer age, and string email. So now it is a fact or it's a, it's a test, it is X unit test for object assertion. So I have created an instance of the person object. So person one equals new person named John Doe, age 30, and email is this. And another instance of person class, person two which has got the same property values, name, age, and email. So how do I test for fluent assertion? Person one should be equivalent to person two. So this test is also passed. And person one should not be null. Okay. Similarly, you could write another test. The easiest test would be person two should 
not be null that will also pass that will also make it pass so there are two basically assertion statement in a single um, test method you could write different uh, test for each of these assertions but it is just to simplify the process and to explain the things and i hope you got the point and let's see how we assert the properties person should have correct properties so again the new person object is created with the same name age and email and then person this person object should dot match the person classes where p this is the lambda expression lambda operator p p goes to p dot name equals equals john doe and 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 p dot age equals 30 and and p dot email equals john doe john dot do at example dot com so this is also a passing test as you can see here okay so this is a valid way of uh, asserting with the fluent assertion person should match person object where p the predicate or the lambda operator goes to p dot name p dot age and p dot email and the next test is numeric assertion test where i have uh, initialized number as 10 and number should be positive which is it which it is and number should be in the range 0 to 20 and number should be greater than 5 all of these conditions are met over here so this unit test is this test is also passing i mean whether it is a unit or integration test there's another thing it's just a fluent assertion okay and um, this is another test string assertion test now finally we have come to the string assertion test where i have declared a string hello world and this text string should contain the world the word world and text should start with hello and text should end with ld okay so all of this three conditions are met so this uh, test is also passing so if i run all this test once again run all tests in view you'll see that they will again pass and you know you can just uh, modify this test this can just uh, um, play with these tests to make it failing and then again pass it modify it and everything that you want so the result has again come so all the tests are passed 17 tests 17 out of 17 so it has actually discovered all of these test classes so unit test one which was done in the previous lecture okay and uh, the other advanced assertion and collection so wherever there is a fact attribute with any class and any method that has got this fact attribute will be actually um, collated as a test and it will be under that particular class so unit test one class has got one test collection assertion has got 12 tests and other advanced assertions which is this class has got how many tests one two three four tests so 17 in all tests which are all passing tests so hope you have been able to understand a little bit about the advanced assertions with fluent library custom assertions with fluent assertions so custom assertions in fluent assertions are a way to create custom validation logic for our objects this is helpful when we need to create assertions that are specific to our application and cannot be achieved with built-in assertions. So let's switch over to Visual Studio and create, I've created another project. Let's flip over to that. So like before, I've created a brand new solution with name Custom Fluent Assertions. It has got one project, Custom Fluent Assertion print assertions of uh, x unit test type like we created from template last time and i have created a person assertions class okay class file and here i am going to write the code since it is a person assertions class or person something to do with person so i have to create a person model for this okay and these namespaces i have already written using fluent assertions as you know because fluent assertion is the new good package which is at the core of this project it has already been um, put into the project file if you double click i have already done that uh, 
um, plumbing work. So the NuVid package is already included after creating the XUnit test project. And I have created the personal assistant class, which I'm going to fill. So first thing first, So I'll create a public class person. So first name, last name and age are three properties, public properties in this person model class and age is of int type. Now, the last thing that I will do is the creating the person test. So before that, I'll have to do all the plumbing work. So for that, I need a couple of classes. The first thing that I will need is a class known as person assertions class is very important so this is ai my dear so it is sometimes a pain okay anyway i'll have to get by with the ai stuff that is always trying to dictate us the code sometimes it works sometimes most of the time it doesn't. Uh, public class person assertions. Now I will explain everything after I have written the completed the this method. Okay. I mean this class. So it derives from or it implements the reference type assertions. Angular bracket. I'll explain each and everything in detail after I have finished like this, you know, in the sort of public person assertions and here it gets person object passes pass to it instance and this instance object is passed to the base class. That's it. And then the last line is another line. Strong protected override string identifier is simply a string. So, what do these lines mean? I'll come in a bit, come to the point in a bit. So, that now this line, this signature of this class, public class person assertions, it derives from reference type assertions. 
with person and person assertions here it declares a new class person assertions that inherits from reference type assertions as it is cleared the first generic argument specifies the type of object being asserted person in this case and the second is the class itself type of the class itself which is person assertions okay and public person assertions as i was writing i commented that this is the uh, constructor for the person assertions class and it takes a person object as an argument and passes it to the base constructor of the reference type assertions person person assertions and this last line protected override string identifier uh, and uh, it is pointing to the person string this is an overridden property that specifies the identifier for the object being asserted in this case it's simply the string person so let's go over and complete the code now i will write some extension methods which is actually the heart of this uh, custom fluent assertions and is the core logic that i am going to write public static class person like i said previously uh, i will tell each and every line i will explain but for now please follow what i am writing that part is correct absolutely so it is a static method should on a static class which doesn't require instance it doesn't require any instantiation so all the static extension methods are written in a static class with a static method static extension method names and then another one is Passed in argument assertions dot subject I'll each explain each and every line because all of them are important.
this and constraint type it actually allows the fluent exertion fluent assertion to chain the assertions okay so chaining the assertion we have already studied in a previous lecture so execute dot assertion dot for condition and what is the for condition here what i am going to write as a logic is that the first name should not be empty and the first name should be greater than or equal to two characters length so accordingly i think things are getting quite clear right um it's not that difficult but the salient points i am going to discuss later on explain a little bit greater than or equal to 2 and then i will chain another condition which is dot fail with name of fail with and this method this extension method let's see what argument it takes it takes a message see fail with say taking a fail reason plus 3 overloads okay so this is actually this is a method uh, this is a message uh, that it takes it sets the failure message when the assertion is not met or completes the failure message set to a prior call to assertion scope with dot with expectations okay fail reason function will not be called unless the assertion is not met So if the assertion is met, then it will not be called. So let's write a message, suitable message. this is when the test fails when the condition is not met this message arises or it message pops up first name and finally because it is expecting an and constraint type one person assertion so it has to return an and constraint return new and constraint on person assertions passing assertion which was passed to this method as parameter all right that is one of that is another of these extension methods we have written to should and have valid first name and i will stop after writing another one which is i just copy this it helps me to speed up the things a little bit not much though um and i will change the name so instead of valid first name this will be b adult it will be checking if the person is adult b adult so this person assertion this is the same this part so you are putting the argument on this object and person assertion type and which is called as assertions so var instead of first name i will make it age so assertion dot subject dot age all right so what this subject is actually doing it's the object which value is being asserted okay and this object is the person object and this person object's age and here the for condition will be different it will be age greater than equal to 18 i'll check if the age is greater than equal to 18 then that is the condition 
18 or more and it fails with expected an adult person but found age if it fails comes up with this message then age and then finally return the and new and constraints on person assertions passing the assertions type or assertions object and that's it that's practically it so we'll stop and explain ponder on this code which is quite considerable amount and in the next lecture we'll create the tests that will use the static class person ex assertion extensions as well as person assertions so what we have learned in this um, project so far is this have valid first name this assertion checks if the first name property of a person object is not null and has a length greater than or equal to 2 this assertion is implemented as an extension method for the person assertions class and similarly the b adult assertions this b adult it checks if the age property of a person object is greater than or equal to 18 this assertion is implemented as a method for the person assertions class all right so that is now this line you know var first name equals assertions dot subject dot first name this line retrieves the value of the first name property of the person object being asserted the subject property of the assertions object is the object being asserted and execute assertion execute dot assertion this is the entry point to the fluent assertions api wherever it is written execute dot assertion it is the entry point to the fluent assertion M API it provides a fluent interface for creating complex assertions and as this is all quite clear for condition and fail with conditions so you can read the code it is pretty straightforward I am not going to explain it any further and this last line and constraint this line returns a new and constraint person assertions object that includes the original assertions object this allows us to chain multiple assertions together now in the previous lectures having seen the custom person assertions and we have left the testing part to this lecture so let's flip, flip over to visual studio and start working with our project that we have created in the last session last lecture so all that i need to do is to continue on this um, class file person assertion dot cs and write the tests and test it so here i have the necessary using statements already with me so now i have to create a class to write the tests So fact is the attribute for the x in testing. So the test is named person should have valid first name.
since I am not checking age, so it is not necessary to write the age. But if you like, you can also put age as well. And uh, terminate the statement here. So here comes our extension method, have valid first name. That is the beauty of this custom assertion. Okay, person should have valid first name. That's all. So let's finish writing the second test and then we will test together. Again, a public void, it doesn't return anything. So person should be an adult. So let's copy this part. All right, and then call the other extension method, which is person dot should be adult. And that's it. Oh, before that, its criteria is the age. So here you have to write the age. Age equals, say, okay, 18 or 19. So let's start with 18. All right. And then just uh, test it. What would you expect? You'd expect both the tests to pass. Okay, so they both pass. Now, if you want to fail anything, say you can write first name as J and let's see so one of this tests failed one passed one failed okay so this one failed person test uh, so you can see the statement over here what has been written expected a valid first name but found J okay and so you can correct this Joe Joe will be all right now because Joe is at least two characters long so it will pass all right and for this to fail you can make it 17 and then click on test icon so now this one fails so what is the message expected an adult person but found age 17 all right so it's beautiful isn't it custom assertion and it actually helps us to make the tests much more readable and it makes us um, write more and more tests because you know once you are able to write uh, these methods or just use the built-in uh, assertion methods you'll find that it is more like a you know, you are acting as a layman with the testing suit. So that's it. In this class or in this lecture, we'll be taking the best practices for using fluent assertions. And in the previous lectures, we have seen how to configure fluent assertions, what is the significance of fluent, fluent assertions, and we have created some basic fluent assertions as well as advanced fluent assertions and finally custom fluent assertions where you write your own assertion and create the unit tests to use those custom assertions all right so let's flip over to visual studio and i have already created a best practice fluent assertions project and i have also included the fluent assertions as a um, NuGet package okay so you can check it here it's already having fluent assertions so in this uh, uh, class we have already uh, created this class and in this class we will create uh, a method
say my method okay and it just returns a number arbitrary number let us say say 42 you can return any other number okay just to test this method with the help of the fluent assertions that we have learned best practices and i will tell you what are the best best practices that we have used okay and uh, then there is another int my method with a different argument that is a overload of so int my method again with this a different signature which i am method overload which is permitted in object oriented c sharp all right so it actually allows it accepts a argument which is a string and throw new argument null exceptions and name of arg so it has already completed this part of the code for me okay and then I want arg dot length all right that's it and then another method is public int my other method let us give it a different name although you could still use my method but I have chosen to give it a different name so that will test uh, a wide ranger range of um, topics so int x int y it takes two arguments again and it returns x plus y plus 10 You could give any other number x plus y plus 42 x plus y plus 10 or x into y into 10 or something any, anything which is convenient to you okay and that's it so these are the i mean methods for my um, test best practices all right and i will write now the tests for this class so i will create another class test practice test best best practices test or click another go for another class make this class name as best practice test okay and i will declare a read only variable private read only uh, what this class is test best practices instance of test best practices say best practices equals new test i have instantiated a read-only instance of the type or the class test best practices that call it best practices okay and then let us write the tests so again it starts with the fact attribute okay for any x unit test and then the methods test methods again it starts with public word it, these tests don't return anything and it don't take any argument okay so now naming convention is also one of the best practice which we are following here my method should return expected value so the name clearly says the intent of this test
Now, Arrange Act assert are three very important steps. I mean, the entire test can be divided into Arrange Act and Assert. So, Arrange is you are arranging the variables. Say 42 because 42 is being written by my method. Okay, expected is 42 and act in the act step. We call the relevant method in the relevant class where actually equals best practice best practices dot my method. That's fine. So it has already prompted the correct code that he expected me to write. And then I am going to write the assert statement. So not assert dot equal because that is not the fluent assertion. And this is the class about fluent assertion. So arrange act and assert. So in the assert step, I will write actual dot should dot be expected and in this b you know this uh, extension method b it, it also accepts a message okay so it we can end it over here but it actually plus one overload so the next overload is a message appropriate message so what i can write here should be expected actual should be expected because because my method should return 42 as simple as that so this is one of the facts one of the tests and the next test is public void my method should throw exception when argument null That is that part where it accepts a string argument and if the argument is null it should throw an exception again the arrange part is there which is string string arg equals null because we are testing for uh, null action we can write like that it is a delegate that encapsulates a method that has no parameters and doesn't return a value so either act or action can make it even act shorter um, this is uh, anonymous method and it points to something which is let's see so what was that class my, I mean best practices the instance of test best practices best practices dot my method with an argument okay remember this is one of the two methods I mean for this uh, method signature my method 
and this takes an argument of type strings okay and then the assert step so it's already giving me prompt act dot should throw argument null exception that's fine so let's keep this part but I'll have to add something more and I'll have to indent it a little bit so arrange act assert act dot should throw argument null exception and params should be arg chaining together okay this will demonstrate chaining and pram name should should be within double quotes another extension method the chaining of two extension methods or multiple extension methods it shows so arc okay so b is another extension method and it asserts string expected string because okay i could write another um, probably another message but we'll stop at that to keep it single simple okay <clears throat> and lastly i will write another fact test and let this not be fact this is theory this will be actually testing multiple conditions in one test basically it is a combination of a few tests theory with inline data all right so this is inline data is 0 and 1 i will explain everything in a bit please have some i mean just give me a bit of a time so inline data 0 1 and 1 0 or you can keep 1 2 as prompted is your call and inline data 1 1 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 and there's another public wide statement public wide Let, this is a test for the other method my other method my other method should return correct result and integer x y int expected int actual no i am making uh, these two integers as x and y calling them x and y because you can see my other method accepts two parameters of integer type x and y now let's fill this test so act and asset okay here there is no arrange step sometimes that also happen it's all scenario based so var result is best practices dot my other method and passing these two arguments x and y that's fantastic and uh, asset step result dot should uh, 
I can test several conditions. Uh, I mean, several chained assertions. That's what I am going to do. And all of these will be independent tests. In fact, I could just write three different facts with these data. I mean, uh, this is just like, you know, three different tests in one theory attribute. It just says, mark the test method as being a data theory. Data theory is a test which are fed various bits of data from a data source. This is a data source, inline data. Provides a data source for a data theory with the data coming from the inline values. So result should, what I'm going to test, should be greater than, not zero, greater than x. And next line, and dot should or and and for chaining and be greater be greater than y um, dot and chain another one and let's write this one be in range x plus y and 100 between x plus y and 100 and not be 42 and for chaining That's it. Act and assert. So there is no arrange here. Okay. Unlike these first two tests. Okay. Let's test it. Okay. Um, click on test. Run all tests. Five tests it is discovered. Three for this. One plus one. 3 plus 1 plus 1, 5. So all of the tests have passed. Okay. Hmm. So my other test methods all have passed. Should return correct result. These three inline data tests have passed. Okay. Plus this has also passed and this has also passed. Okay. Um, so that's it. So in this class, we have seen the following best practices. So this code includes the following best practices. Okay. So use descriptive test method names that clearly state what the test is testing. Use fact for simple tests that don't require data driven testing and use theory for tests that require multiple sets of data. Use private read only to initialize only any objects or variables needed for testing. Use var when possible to make the code more concise. Use fluent assertions should extension method to make assertions more readable. Use and to chain multiple assertions together. Use because to provide context for the assertion. Use inline data for data driven tests. Use action to wrap the test code in a lambda expression when testing for exceptions. Use throw to test that an exception is thrown and use and dot param name to test the name of the parameter that caused the exception. So that's all. Thank you.